When it comes to server CPUs, you could be forgiven for thinking that there's only two choices, either Intel Xeon or AMD Epic. And although these two do represent the vast majority of the market, there is a third option, ARM, that's offer quite a different approach. To understand what the difference between these three processor families are, we need to take a few steps back and look at the basis of each of them. The central processing unit known as the CPU is the brain of the server, but it's not exactly smart. A CPU only works when given very specific instructions, suitably called the instruction set, which tell the processor to move data between registers and memory or to perform a calculation. If the instruction set is varied and complicated, then the CPU design is termed CISC, Complex Instruction Set Computer. If the instruction set is less complex and more uniform, then the design is termed RISC, Reduced Instruction Set Computer. All of our three server CPU families fall into one of these two categories. Both Intel Xeon and AMD Epic are CIS designs and are based on Intel's original 8086 processor from the late 1970s. Any CPU based on this original design is now termed an x86 processor. Now, although a processor born in the 70s may not seem very cutting edge, this initial design has been updated and superseded many times to get to the modern 64-bit x86 Xeon and Epic processors we see today. ARM CPUs use a RISC design, evolving from the original Acorn and BBC microcomputers over multiple generations since the 1980s to the ARM CPUs we have today. Now, we mentioned at the start of this video that Intel Xeon and AMD Epic CPUs dominate the server space, but over this same period, ARM processors have taken over the smartphone, tablet, and ultralight laptop markets. So why is this? Well, as RISC-based processors use simpler instruction sets with lower volumes of single-action instructions, they ultimately consume less power. So they're ideal in devices powered predominantly by batteries rather than mains electric. Now, when you compare this to CIS-based processors, where much more complex instruction sets are used for much more demanding applications, it's clear to see why they have dominance in each of their respective markets and use cases. So I hear you ask, if ARM processors are ideal for low-powered handheld devices, why are we talking about them in a server video? And that's a great question and one I'm about to answer for you. In x86 CPUs, the complex instruction sets are processed across a number of cores, starting at 8 cores in entry models, up to 64 in Xeon and 128 in Epic models at the high end. This scaling, of course, results in an increase in performance by improving the speed and power to handle more demanding computing workloads. By comparison, an ARM CPU employs many smaller, less sophisticated, low-power processors that each have multiple cores themselves, so the compute tasks are actually shared across hundreds of microprocessors. This method of increasing performance is sometimes referred to as scaling out and can result in an ARM server delivering greater processing power whilst at the same time using less energy and requiring less cooling than its x86 based equivalent. It also allows for different types of cores in the CPU to handle different workloads. This difference in approach is further enhanced when we consider server CPU generations may be updated every two to three years, as opposed to smartphone and tablet CPUs being updated at least once a year to maintain demand in a very competitive market. This increased cycle of development has led to much more evolution in the ARM space than the x86 over the last decade, resulting in ever smaller CPU architectures. Typically, x86 CPUs have gone from 14 nanometer to 10 and recently to 7 nanometer, whereas ARM-based CPUs have gone through 14, 10, 7, 5 and 4 nanometer designs in the same time. Each time the transistors get smaller, a greater number can fit into the CPU, increasing its overall performance. This makes ARM CPUs even more attractive to the server market, where there's an increase in software-defined technologies and applications that require smaller but more numerous tasks, such as high-performance computing, machine learning, deep learning and AI. It's worth mentioning that part of the reason for this rapid generational transition and inherent flexibility is that ARM only designs the processors for others to customise and manufacture, whereas often x86 CPUs are designed and fabricated in-house, so the development is much more reliant on a single player rather than multiple companies working together. 
So now we've covered the contracts and differences in the two approaches to CPUs, let's take a bit of a closer look at each of the three main players. When it comes to Intel Xeon scalable CPUs, we've mentioned that increasing speed and power are how they deliver their performance. The range is split into silver, gold and platinum families, aimed at increasingly complex workloads with higher clock speeds and more cores as you go up the range. Now there's also the option to combine two, four or even eight CPUs in a single server to gain better performance. AMD EPIC CPUs follow a similar approach, offering increased clock speeds and cores, but separating them by use rather than family names. In contrast to the x86 approach, we've seen that ARM CPUs may be made up of many more and different types of cores. The various kinds can be packaged together to tackle different workloads. Some may be aimed at driving maximum energy efficiency and others to enhance real-time performance, yet they can all be combined into a single CPU. Then multiple CPUs could be installed in a single server in the same way as x86 for greater processing power. As we've mentioned, ARM is the designer of the processors, but not the overall brand like Intel or AMD. Instead, ARM licenses its IP to manufacturers such as Apple, Qualcomm and Samsung, which produce their own ARM-based CPUs. In the server space, this includes brands such as Ampere and NVIDIA. So we've established there are three credible server CPU options. I suppose you could say four if you include IBM's power CPUs, but these are also risk-based and we're not going to include them in this video as they rely end-to-end -end on IBM hardware and a bespoke software stack. So they can't be used in custom server builds like the Intel, AMD and ARM CPUs can. When it comes to workloads on the server, an x86 processor is predominantly designed to work with Microsoft Windows Server or Linux. In contrast, ARM CPUs are currently only supported by Linux. Beyond these software considerations, there isn't much else that needs to change in your server, regardless of the CPU that you choose. Standard DRAM can be used by all three, and regular GPUs, storage drives and networking controllers will all function fine too. So there you have it, Intel and ARM x86 CPUs remain the dominant force in servers for now, but ARM is a credible alternative, especially in the HPC space. It is likely that we'll see a shift in market share taken by ARM variants as server workloads continue to evolve in their favour. Please don't hesitate to get in touch with our SCAN IT team if you have more questions, and we can also advise the ideal configuration, including the optimal CPUs for your particular workloads. Alternatively, leave us a comment below, and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on further ARM CPU content in the future. And I'll see you here next time.